Now, state the triangle law of vectors. We won't waste our time with this. Whenever two vectors are given and their directions are aligned, okay? Their directions are realigned. The direction of the third component represents the resultant. So, so long as we align the direction of the two vectors, the direction of the third one represents Angel, Angel, I'll go, I'll find time to, okay. All right. A man travels 30 kilometers north of east, north of east, meaning you must be um at the at the um east and then locate the north of east. And and 20 kilometers due north. So he went through two different displacements. Okay. Um, 30 kilometers, 30 degrees north of east. And then travels 20 kilometers due north. With the, with the aid of a diagram, calculate the magnitude and direction of the displacement of the man from his initial position. We can actually use three different methods to solve this. And we are going to go through all of them. So once it's about bearings, let's indicate, you, you must indicate your cardinal point. So you can it can also be just a sketch. So this is the east, this is the north. And the man travels 30 degrees north of east. This is the east. What is where is the north of east? Up here. So from the east, an angle of 30 degrees. So assuming this is 30. Assuming this angle is 30, then it means that this is also 60. The displacement is 30 kilometer. So this becomes the displacement. Now he never ended. Then from there, you want to a distance, a displacement of 20 kilometers due north. So draw your canal point again. Of course, this becomes the north. So he went a further 20 kilometers from the north. So this is 20 kilometer. Now, the question demands that with the, with the aid of a diagram, which we've done, calculate the magnitude and direction of the displacement of the man from his initial position. This is the man's initial position. Okay, this is his final position. We are to find the magnitude and the direction of the man's displacement from the initial position. So two things. The first thing is that I can resolve this displacement of 30 kilometers into components. Okay, resolution of vectors into components. If I do that, then the horizontal component will be 30 kilometer times cos of 30, and that will be for x. And then the y, which will be the vertical component, would also be 30 kilometer times the sine of 30 degrees. And we, we all know that we can use 30 or the other um, angle, which is 60. If I use 60, 
the angle to the y axis, then it will be sine cos. If we are using the angle to the x as a is cos sine to the angle, the angle with the y axis is sine cos. So this is also equal to 30 kilometer sine of 60 degrees. 30 kilometer cos of 60 degree. Both would give you the same results. Then resolve the other displacement, 20 kilometer, okay, into components. Now, what angle does it make with the y axis or the north? What angle does the 20 kilometer make with the not all the y axis. Yes. What's the angle with the y axis class? Anybody to quickly share that with us. What angle does a vector make with the y axis? 90. Come again. Please, 90 degrees. No. It is zero. 20 kilometer is just along the north axis or the y axis. So it makes an angle of zero with the y, but it makes an angle of 90 with the x. Udrick, is that okay? Yes, sir. So to resolve this, if you are using the angle to the y axis, it's a sine cos. So x here would be equal to 20 kilometer sine of zero and y will be equal to 20 kilometer cos of zero. So it means the x has no component. It is the y that has a component. And this is equal to if we if we are to use the angle it makes with the x x axis which is the east the angle it makes with that is 90. so this is also equal to 20 kilometer if you are using the angle it makes with the x it is the other is cos sine so 20 kilometer cos of 90 is also equal to 20 kilometer sine of 90. And both would give you the same result. So here, cos 30 or sine 30 is equal to, please, when you come in, please mute yourself. I'm getting feedback from one of you. Mute yourself. Okay. Sine 30 cos um, cos 30 sine 60 is equal to root 3 on 2. So this will be 30 times root of 3 on 2, which is 15 root 3. Sine 30 or cos 60 is half. So we have 30 times half, which is 15 kilometer. So we have resolved this into, then let's come to the other component. Cos 30, uh, cos 90 or sine zero is zero. So this is zero. Then cos zero or sine 90 is one. And so this is also equal to 20 kilometer. Angel, I don't care. <laughs> you must you must be on. So let's determine summation of all the x's. So we are summing up all x's in both situations. So this is 15 root of 3 plus 0 which is equal to 
15 root 3. Then let's sum up all the y's. We have 15 plus 20, giving us 35 kilometer. We are done, almost done. Having obtained summation X and summation Y, you redraw. You redraw because you will determine direction as well. So, summation F of X is positive, meaning it will be along this, the positive X axis. And this is giving us 15 root 3. Then summation f of y, that, that is also positive. So it will be along the positive y axis. This is equal to 35. Now you have two vectors acting perpendicularly in this manner. How do you determine the result? And we went through all this. If you recall, the resultant, when you create an equal vector, so 35. So we've realigned the directions. If this is here and this is here and this is perpendicular, then the resultant would act along this direction. And because of this relationship, we have to use Pythagoras theorem to determine the direction. Therefore, therefore, R squared will be equal to summation F of X squared plus summation F of Y squared. So, Summation f of y is 15 root 3. So 15 root of 3 squared plus summation f of y, 35 squared. We have 15 times 3, 15 squared times 3 plus. So put them together and then give me the final answer. Square 15 multiplied by 3, then square 35, add them, and then give me the final result. I'm waiting for you. What's the, what's the final answer? Oh, I don't want, you know, I don't like time wasting. So let's hurry up. Put this together and then give me the final results. Odric, what are you getting as your final answer? Okay, Julian, go ahead. So please, 43.589. So approximately 43.6. Uh, 43.6. Uh, Cad Cadmill, I'm sure it's a natural problem from your end. Can you please rejoin? So this is the resultant okay now direction julian your hand is up again okay so i have a question direction okay direction you since we have the horizontal since we have the horizontal component and then the vertical component we can easily find this angle okay 
we can easily find this angle. When we find this angle, we have determined the angle it makes with the east or the x axis. Knowing the angle it makes with the east, you can always find the angle it makes with the north. So, assuming this is theta, then this will be 90 minus theta. So, if you take the tangent of this angle, okay, so tan of theta, tan theta is equal to the opposite summation f of y divided by adjacent summation f of x, which is 35 divided by 15 root 3. And if you take the tan inverse of that, so Julian, it's find right. the angle for me. No. Help me determine the angle. Yeah. It's okay. It's a bit last one. Melissa, mm -hmm. Melissa, I'm getting feedback from you, so mute it, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for your yeah. results. So. Hey. 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 Fifty-three point four degrees. So this is a. <laughs> so. This becomes the angle it makes with the east. The resultant makes with the east. If you want the angle, the resultant makes with the north. Okay. So the point is that you can even leave your answer. Okay. Like this. But you must define. 53.4 degrees. Okay. From the east. Okay. Eva. Eva. I'm sure it's a network problem. Please, is the board clear to all? Is it clear? Yes, can sir. You, then, please, if you can see, then I'm sure it's a problem network challenge. Can you rejoin? Matthew, uh, can you can you please rejoin? All right, rejoin. It will be fine. Delays do so. These days, network is a bit problematic. So, so if you want the angle it makes with a north, subtract this from ninety. So ninety minus fifty three point four would give you the angle. The resultant makes with the north. It's not difficult. So this is one way of solving um, this problem. Any question? I want to introduce you to another method. So the, the other method is using cosine rule. How do I use the cosine rule? Okay, so... This is 30, meaning that if this is 30 and this is 60, it means this angle would also be 30. Or um, alternate angles, 30. Then it implies that the whole angle between this vector, 30 degrees, and the 20, the 20 kilometer vector is 30 plus 90, giving us 120. So we have 120 degrees 
between the two displacements. Okay, now we want to resolve to get the resultant. And vectors are equal wherever they are, if they have the same magnitude, direction, and are parallel. So I want to draw the equal vector of this and place it here. Okay, then I want to also draw the equal component of this, place it there. Even if I don't draw the, the equal component of this one, at least look at the direction. This one is here, this one is here. So I can say that then the resultant is from this point, from the tail of the first one to the head of the second one. This line becomes the resultant. R. If this is the resultant, then I can easily use cosine rule to find the resultant. I need this one. I have this angle. I have this component. I have this component. This is 30 kilometer. So the resultant R squared is equal to 30 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 30 times 20 times the cosine of the angle opposite to this, which is 120. 900, 400 minus 2 by 30 by 20. Cos 120 is equal to negative of cos 60. So times minus half. Cos 60 is half. So negative of that. So 2, 2, we have 900 plus 400 plus 600. When we sum this up, we have 1,900. R is therefore equal to the square root of 1,900, which is 43.6 kilometer. The direction. How do we determine the direction? We are looking for the angle first we must find this angle. And because we know this angle to be 30, when we get the small angle we are representing as alpha, we can easily add that to 30 degree to, to determine the angle it makes with the east or the x axis. So using sine rule, using sine rule, we can easily find, or even the same cosine rule would also help us. The same cosine rule. So, sine alpha, sine alpha divided by the, the sine opposite to it. So, divided by 20. Sine of this and this are opposite. So sine alpha divided by 20, which is also equal to, we know this, we found the result. And so sine of 120 divided by R. And R is 43.6. Therefore, let's make sine alpha the subject, we have 20 times sine 120 over 43.6. Please simplify the right-hand side expression for me. Multiply 20 by sine 120, divide that by 46. And then 
Give me the final results. Let's let's be part of whatever we are doing so that we we wouldn't waste time. Eva Cadmel, I hope it's fine now. Um, say please zero point three zero point three nine zero point three nine. Okay, so let's determine. Let's take the sign inverse of that. Sign inverse of zero point three nine. And Miss Tadia. Hello. So your piece is zero point three nine seven. Like the yeah. answer was zero point three nine seven, rather. Zero point three nine seven. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So find determine the sign inverse of zero point three nine seven. So please twenty three point three nine point four. Okay, so twenty three. Twenty three point three nine. Okay, so twenty three point four approximately. All right, so it means this small angle is twenty three point four. When we add thirty to it, angle from the east, angle or direction, direction of the result and from the east becomes. Um, 30 plus 23.4, which is 53.4 degree. Matthew, Matthew, mute yourself. Matthew, mute yourself for me. So, wherever you go, now if you want the angle, this same resultant makes with the x axis. Uh, from the north, subtract this from 90, and you are good to go. Any question? If you are writing, please hurry up. We are going to look at another method. And remute, and remute. If you are writing, please hurry up. We are going to use another method. It's good to have different approach approaches or methods of solving one question. So we've used resolution of vectors into components. We have also used the cosine rule and use a sign rule to determine the angle. Can I can I clean the board? Can I clean the board? Yes. I'm coming. Somebody is asking. Okay, another method. So what do you understand? Please teach somebody. <laughs> teach somebody. Okay. Now, I want to use this by, let me first resolve the 30 kilometer one into components. So the 30 kilometer one ends here. And we use this method to, de to determine the cosine rule. One method we use to find, prove the cosine rule. So if I'm, if I'm to resolve using 30 degrees and 
the displacement. Then this side becomes 30 sine 30. Then this side also becomes 30 cos 30 degrees. Now I have a right angle triangle. O A B. And so I can use Pythagoras theorem in simplifying this or in determining the hypotenuse, which is R. Now the opposite AB would be equal to 20 kilometer plus 30 sine 30. And this is 20 plus sine 30 is half. So 15. The horizontal, which is OE, is also 30 cos 30. Cos 30 is equal to root 3 on 2. So 30 times root 3 on 2, this will give us 15 root 3. If you recall, we use this method. Therefore, OB, OB squared would be equal to OA squared plus AB squared. OA is 15 root 3. So 15 root 3 squared plus AB. AB is 35. And it will bring us to the same value we had, 43 point, I think, 6 kilometer. Please understood. Plus, is it understood? Oh, no feedback from you. Yes, sir. Direction. Direction to the... Direction from the east. This whole angle. Once you have the opposite, the adjacent, you are good to go. So turn of theta, let's use theta to represent the direction from the east, S. AB, which is 35, divided by OA, which is 15 root 3. And you get the same angle. So these are the three different ways of solving this problem. If you have any question, bring it up. If you don't have any question, then we move on. Question C, 4C. Two forces, 30 Newton and 40 Newton, act at right angles to each other. Determine by scale drawing the magnitude and direction of the resultant force using a scale of one centimeter is to five Newton. So here we have to find resultant using scale drawing. We are not to use formula. It is drawn to scale. So 
we have the two forces, 30 Newton and 40 Newton. So F1, 30 Newton, F2, 40 Newton. We are told they are perpendicular. So if they are perpendicular, then the angle between them is 90. So assuming this is one of them, the horizontal one, then there must be a vertical one which must be perpendicular to the other. Here we are not told which one is along the vertical or along the east-west axis, which one is along the north-south axis. All that we are we have is that they are perpendicular. So if this is what I'm doing, but then you can't just be drawing lines. You are told that using a scale, one centimeter is to five Newton. So it means that the 30 Newton one, we need to measure a distance of six centimeter. You go, if one centimeter is to five, then 30 divided by five is six. So to represent the 30, uh, Newton force, we must measure six centimeter using your rule. Unfortunately, my writings are not clear. Okay, so if this is 60, if this is 60, wow, wow, my, my ruler markings not so clear for me. So all that you have to, let me give you the clue. All that you have to do is that one centimeter is to, so is to five Newton. So for 30, okay, you need to measure six centimeter. Ah, for 40, you need to measure, okay, for 40, how many centimeters will you measure? If one centimeter is to five, 40 Newton, how many e. centimeter will you measure? Quick one. Eight centimeters. Eight, Good. eight, so centimeters. eight centimeters. Good. You need to measure eight. Eight centimeters. When you finish, so to scale, when you finish, you use equal vectors. Okay, whatever is here must be equal to whatever it's here. Then you have the direction of the resultant being from this point to this point. So when you measure, once you have taken them into scale, when you measure from here to here, it must give you the resultant. Don't forget, if you, if you get five, if you measure and you have five centimeter, don't forget that one centimeter is two, five Newton. So if you measure and you have five centimeter, it means it is five times five, which is 25 Newton for the resultant. If you measure and you have, you get 10 centimeter, then 10 times five, which is 50. So this time around, we are determining this using measurement, not formula. Direction, you use your protractor to measure this angle. Okay, this is, what we mean by scale drawing. When using scale drawing to do this. Please, any question? Any question? All right. Now I want to take the time to explain something on Archimedes principle a little bit. 
Next week, we'll start with the topics you were given. So, the, the guys, please, if you are given topics to cover, please forward it to me so that I'll add it to what uh, Gehe, Gehe students were given. So, those of you from Addis, Addisco, Augustine, please, in front of him and oh, if you are if you were giving topics, okay, send it to me so that I'll also see what I can do for you. Please let me take a shot of this question, drop it in the group because you are going to look at the question as we discuss. I use uh, I'll take the advantage to explain Archimedes uh, principle to you very well. So I'm taking short of the question, which will be dropped anytime soon. Then when I finish, we'll also go through something on projectile motion. Try to understand projectile motion before next week. All right, so it's been sent. The first question says that Derive an expression for the uptrust on a body of weight W and density sigma when it is immersed in a liquid of density rho. Derive an expression or create a formula So you are giving a body of weight, capital W, its density, sigma, immersed in a liquid of density, rho. Okay. Then we are asked to produce or create a formula to calculate the uptrust. So weight, the weight of body, the weight, weight of body W. Then density of body. The density of the body we are told is sigma. Then density of liquid. Within which the body is immersed, rho. We are to derive an expression for the actress on the body. Okay. Now, what is uptrust? What is uptrust? Yes. Eva. Eva, what is uptrust? Hello, Eva. Is Eva there? Frida. Frida, tell us. What you understand by uptrust? Please, an uptrust is an upward force which exists on a body when immersed in fluid. Okay. Okay. So an uptrust is a, is a buoyant force, as Cadmus is also saying, or an upward force which acts on a body immersed in fluid. If it can be liquid, it can be gaseous. Okay. 
the practicality of this is that when you inflate a ball or a balloon and then you, you try to press it down water medium, okay, after taking off the force exerted on the ball or the balloon, you realize that the balloon or the ball, ball quickly pops up as if there is this force within the water which is always pushing it out of it. This force is what we mean by aptras. Okay. Aptras in the laboratory can be determined in two different ways. Okay. Okay. Aptras in the laboratory can be determined in, in two different ways. First, measure an object in air using the spring balance. So an object is suspended on a spring balance. Its weight in air is determined. So this reading gives you the weight of the object in air. Now, when the same object is weighed when immersed fully or partially in fluid. So, this is fluid. Now, we will also want to find a way to collect the displaced water or liquid. So we weigh the objects in fluid. So we have weight in air, W in air, as a real weight, real weight of the objects. Now we have weight in water, weight in water or liquid, which is equal to the apparent weight. Now, experiment has said that the real weight W in air is always greater than W in liquid or fluid. The difference between the two weights is equal to the uptrust. So uptrust uptrust is equal to real, real weight minus apparent weight. Now, the same thing can also be determined when we manage to collect the volume of the water displays when the object is measured or weighed in fluid. So as the object is lowered in fluid, either fully or partially, there will be some volume of water displaced. And this volume of water displaced is equal to what? How do we relate the volume of water displaced to the object? Yes. Any idea? Mamiya? The volume of water displaced is equal to the volume of the objects immersed in the water. So, the volume of water displaced is equal to the volume of the objects immersed in water. Okay, so after collecting this, uh, the water displaced, we determine the weight of the water displaced. Weight, weight of water displaced. Now, Jojo, how can we determine the weight of this water displaced? Jojo, Ayo, how can we determine the weight of the water displaced? Oh, Jojo, are you there? 
Or uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Mamiya? Mamiya? How do we determine the weight of the water displaced? You can measure the mass of the water. You can first measure the mass of the empty beaker. Exactly. You measure with the water inside. And then you subtract. Thank you, you subtract the mass of the beaker. Then you come and use the mass to you multiply it by gravity. Thank you. So all you that the... all that we are saying is that measure. I'm coming. I I I need. I'm sending something. Measure the mass of the empty container. Okay. After after uh, it's been used to collect the displaced water, measure the mass of the beaker and the water and then subtract. Now, if this experiment is done very well, you realize that the weight of water displaced is always equal to the difference between the real weight and the apparent weight. And so we conclude by saying that abtras, abtras is also equal to weight of fluid, of fluid displaced, fluid displaced. Now weight is mass times acceleration due to gravity. And so we can also say that then abtras equals mass of fluid displaced times gravity. And this is from weight is mass times gravity. The same mass Mass is also equal to density times volume. And so we can also relate abtras to be. So look at how gradually we are building our relation, our formula. I'm coming. Okay. So the same abtras can be density of fluid displays times volume of fluid displays times gravity. And so, abtras U is equal to rho V G, where rho is density of the fluid V is the volume of the fluid, G is gravity. And so, weight in air minus weight in fluid is always equal to rho V G. This is a very important relation we'll be using to calculate, calculate either weight of the object in liquid or something like that. Then, let's go back to our question. We are given weight of the, of the body, density of the body, density of the liquid within which the body is displayed or is submerged. And being asked to calculate for, determine an expression for the abstract. So, we've just realized that abstract can be two weights, W in air minus W in fluid, or density of fluid times volume of fluid displaced times gravity. So using abstract 
equal to rho vg. Rho, we have it, the density of the liquid. Volume of liquid displaced, we don't know. But there is one thing that we know, that volume of liquid displaced is equal to volume of body. So when we manage to find the volume of the body, we, we can determine the volume of the liquid displaced. All right. Now we have weight of the body, W. Weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. Mass is equal to density times volume. So mass of the body is equal to density of the body, which is sigma times volume of the body times gravity. Therefore, V will be equal to the weight of the body over density of the body times gravity. So once we found volume of the body, we've also found volume of the liquid display. Therefore, uptrust will be equal to density of the liquid rho. Volume of the liquid displays is this. W over sigma times g times gravity g. So that gravity will cancel gravity for uptrust to be equal to rho w over sigma. And your final answer must be an um, embodiment of whatever you were given. You shouldn't have any, any new or different letter introduced. So this becomes the expression as the question demanded. Please, any question? All right. The next question. The next question asks that a solid weighs 237.5 gram in air. And 12.5 gram when it is totally immersed in a liquid of density 0 0.9 gram per cm cube. Calculate I, the density of the solid. Calculate I, the density of the solid. So at least if I have no idea, the first thing to put down is that density of solid must be equal to mass of solid over volume of solid. This is an expression for density. So ask yourself, Do I have the mass of the solid? Looking at the information the question gives you, do you have the mass? Class, do we have the mass of the solid? Class, no, do we have, read, read the question well. Read the question well. Listen. A solid weighs. Please. We have solid, the mass. Okay, ma'am, yes, I'm sir. coming. A solid weighs 237.5 yes, gram in air. 
and 12.5 gram when it is totally immersed in a liquid of density 0 0.9 gram per cm cube. Calculate the density of the solid. Yes, we have the mass of the solid. Weight and mass are related. Do we have the volume of the solid? Class, do we have the volume of the solid? No, sir. All right. So we don't have the volume of the solid. Can we find it? Yes, Can sir. we find If yes, how? How do we determine the volume of the solid? Any idea as to how to determine it? Okay, Julian. Julian. If the volume, if the density is 0 0.9 grams per centimeter cube and the mass, the mass is, the mass when it's immersed in water is 12.5. And we put it into the formula. So all that Julian is saying is that once we know that abstract weight in air minus weight in liquid is equal to density of the liquid times the volume of liquid displaced by gravity, we can determine this out of this relation. Julian, is that what you are saying? Good. Class, start work. I want to see what you can determine for volume of liquid displays. Then use it to determine the density of the solid. Start work. Please, I want each one of you to be part. Think through. Okay. Let's see what you can do. If you are not, at the end of it, we will discuss. But, I mean, give yourself some level of thinking as we as I drop attendance on the page. So start work. I'm giving you three minutes to do this, to determine the density of the solid. Three minutes. It's one eight. Mamiya, what did you get for density? Elizabeth, you're also here. And the rest of you. Cadmill, Calvin, Weku, Eva, Erevoa, Eva. Frida, you are here. Mamiya, what did you get for the density? Yes, I got 0 0.95 gram per centimeter cube. Okay. So, Elizabeth, what did you also get? Yes, I also had 9.5 gram per centimeter cube. Nine. Yeah, 9.5. Really? Yes, please. Okay, let's see. Let's see. So weight, weight in air. Okay. Don't forget we can express weight in air as mass in air times gravity minus weight in liquid mass in liquid times gravity which is equal to rho vg so if we are going by this then gravity will cancel out so that we have mass in air minus Mass in liquid equal to mass of liquid displaced, which is rho v. So two three seven point five minus twelve point five is equal to what's the density of the liquid? What's the density of the liquid? Zero given? point nine. 0 0.9. Yes. Gram per cm cube. 
times volume of liquid displaced, which we don't know. Also, VL will be equal to, I think, 225 divided by 0 0.9, which is equal to, I think, 250. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes, please. Good. So, this is the volume of liquid displays, which is also equal to volume of vo body or object because it is fully submerged. Therefore, density of solid is, is equal to its mass in a real mass. 237.5 divided by 250. And it must be 0 0.9, 0 0.195. Yes, please, gram per centimeter cube. Five gram per. So Elizabeth, look at what um whatever went wrong. So this is the density of the solid. Please, any question? Now. The next question, I, 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 calculate the fraction of the solid submerged in a liquid of density 1.19 gram per cm cube. Calculate the fraction of the solid submerged in a liquid of density 1.19. Ayo, how do you understand the question? I want to see how you understand this question. Jojo. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tell us how you understand the question. I think if the solid was remo was removed like removed from it and placed in, in a different liquid what parts of the liquid will be in that hey, what parts of the solid will be submerged in that liquid compared with to know the fraction co compared with the whole volume of the solid right yes sir that's exactly the question Okay, so if it is the solid is removed and then placed in a liquid whose density is 1.19, what will be the fraction of the submerged parts as against the whole volume of the solid? But you see, the question talks about fraction implying that when the when the body solid is submerged in a new liquid it is not completely submerged i hope you agree with me class it is not when placed in a new liquid of the given density it isn't completely submerged the reason for which they are saying what is the fraction below as against the whole volume of the solid. So it means when the when it is placed in the new liquid, it's the, the solid floats, meaning we'll have part of it submerged and part of it up. Class, are you okay? Class, are you okay? Yes, sir. If that is the case, then we we use the principle of flotation. We employ the principle of flotation. Give me, share with me the conditions on which a body floats. What are the conditions upon which a body can stay afloat? Yes. Okay, Audrey, one. 
Say please, if the density of the solid is lower than that of the water. So if the density of the solid is less than the density of the liquid or of the water, the body would float. It's true. That's one. Two. What is the second condition which will cause a body to float? The second condition for a body to stay afloat. Oh, just share with us whatever you have in mind. What's the second condition for a body to float? Who is talking? If the body mm -hmm. displaces its weight in the fluid, well, that will make it fluid. Uh, it's true, but you are not polishing it. Julian. So please, if uh, object is, um, the body is a uh, hollow, hollow. And for, it must be hollow. And when it is hollow, something, when it is hollow, it means it would displace enough volume of fluid. The greater the volume of liquid displays, the greater is the uptrust. Uptrust is directly proportional to density. Uptrust is directly proportional to volume of liquid displays. So that's why for floating objects, it is made hollow. Okay, the other condition is that the weight, Mamiya, what you said, the weight of objects of objects must be equal to weight of liquid displays. Weight of liquid display or the uptrust. So for a body to float, it must displace weight of liquid, which is equal to its own weight. This is also mass of objects of objects must be equal to mass of mass of liquid displays. This is because gravity will cancel out. Okay. Now when for a, for a ship to float, the uptrust the uptrust must be equal to the weight of the ship. Then the ship can float. For ships, when the uptrust is greater than its weight, it doesn't help the ship. The, the ship becomes unstable on the surface of the water. That is why for ships, when ships offload goods and they are leaving the shore, okay, they must refill it with sand sack of sand so that we have greater part of it submerged volume some part of the volume submerged else the strong wind or storm can displace the ship if the uptrust is so much greater than the weight it's just like somebody lying on on an orthopedic mattress you don't harm the mattress but for ships it must some huge part of it must be within the water for stability. If it's not stable, the wind, strong wind can just topple it over. So when ships of load goose, when they are going back without goose, they, they must be filled with sand so that parts of it would be submerged within the liquid for stability. All right, so... Mass of object must be equal to mass of liquid displays. Now, mass of object is equal to density of objects times volume of objects. And here we are referring to the solid. Volume of solid. This is the mass of the object. 
which is equal to density of liquid times volume of liquid displaced. Now, because we are to determine fraction, what is the fraction of solid submerged in the liquid? Don't forget, when we get the volume of liquid displaced, we have found the volume of the solid submerged. So we are going to, out of this, we are determining VL, volume of liquid displaced over volume of solid. And this will be equal to density of solid divided by density of liquid. This ratio, VL over VS is equal to the fraction, the fraction submerged. Because VL, which is the volume of liquid displaced, is equal to the volume of the solid submerged divided by volume of solid, the whole volume of this. So this gives us the fraction of the solid submerged. So fraction submerged is equal to the density of solid, which we've just calculated, 0 0.95 divided by the density of the liquid, 1.19. When we calculate this, this is approximately equal to 0 0.8. And so we can say that the fraction submerged is equal to 80%. Approximately 80%. One may ask, why are we expressing this in percentage when it talks about fraction? Don't forget, percentage is also a fraction. 50% is equal to half. 25% is equal to one over four. 75% is three on four. So if we express it in fraction, uh, percentage, we are equally expressing it in um, fraction. It means 80% of the solid is will be submerged in this new liquid and only 20% will be above the liquid. Please, is that okay? Class, is it understood? Yes, sir. And this this Theory of fraction is what we use. Audric, what is the problem? Where lies your problem? Sir, please, could you restart everything? Hey, from starting from the second question sir, of. Um, sir, please, yeah, the second question. Okay, so let's go over the second part of the question again. For my cherished listeners, <laughs> what we are saying is that please pay attention. Yes, I understand this is a bit technical. So, the question is that calculate the fraction of the solid submerged in a liquid of density 1.19 gram per cm cube. So we are looking for the part of the solid which will be in a new liquid. So when the solid is removed and placed in a new liquid, whose density is 1.19, okay? Because of difference in density, the, 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 the amount submerged will not be the same because 
Different density means different uptrust. And so the amounts of mesh will change. So what will be the volume submerged as against the whole volume of the solid? That is all that the question is saying. But once we have the solid not being completely submerged in the liquid, but we have fraction, some up, some part of it below, it means the solid floats. It means the solid float. So we must apply the principle of flotation. And the principle of flotation is that for, for a body to stay afloat, the mass of the body, mass of solid, must be equal to mass of liquid displaced. This is the principle of flotation. Okay. What is the mass of the solid? We can express mass in terms of density and volume. So density of solid times volume of solid is equal to density of liquid times volume of liquid. There is one thing that we know. And that is, if we manage to find volume of liquid displaced, it is equal to the volume of that part of the solid submerged in the water. So when you have volume of liquid displaced, you have volume of solid submerged. And this is the volume of the whole solid. So by taking this ratio, you have fraction. So V, we make out of this, we make VL on V of solid, the subjects. And this would be equal to density of solid divided by density of liquid. Audrey, I hope, I hope it's, it's well. Yes, sir. I understand up to here. Okay. All right, then let's continue. The density of solid we have earlier calculated for it. And that is 0 0.9. So we have 0 0.95 divided by the whole density of the liquid, which was given to us, 1.19. Therefore, fraction submerged, fraction of solid submerged. And let's just represent that by F. Audrey, divide 0 0.95 by 1.19. Really? Rashid, is it blurry? What's the what's the state? Sir, please, I got 0 0.798. So this is 0 0.798, which is approximately 0 0.8. And this we can state it as 8 over 10. Meaning when you divide the whole volume into 10, 8 out of it is submerged, and only 2 out of it is um, floats. This is also equal to 80%. So fraction submerged is equal to 80%. That is what we mean. So only 20% of the whole volume will be up, okay, the liquid. All right, then the last question. Calculate 
the density of a liquid. This time, it's about the density of a liquid in which the solid would float. So the key, the key term mentioned here is that in which the solid would float. Okay, with one fifth of its volume exposed above the surface, the liquid surface. Would calculate the density of a solid, uh, sorry, of a liquid in which the solid, the same solid, would float with one fifth of each volume exposed above the liquid surface. This time, one, one fifth of each volume is exposed. So class, uh, um, Elizabeth, if one fifth is exposed, what will be the fraction submerged? Um, is 200 centimeter cube. Elizabeth, listen to the question. If, yes, one, if one fifth of each volume is exposed, what fraction will be submerged? Exposed. Yes, fraction. One fifth is exposed. What will be the fraction submerged? Okay, a different a different person to um to try. If one fifth is exposed, what will be the fraction submerged? Uh, four fifth, sorry. Yes, four fifth. Okay, so this time we don't know the density of the liquid. Okay, so calculate the density of a liquid in which the solid, the same solid, would float with one fifth of its volume exposed above the liquid surface. Start work. Five minutes. Just make me proud. Please, each one of you should be part of what we are doing. Do not sit on the fence, right? So just engage your thoughts. Let's see what you can do. After all, at the end, at the end of it, we'll all discuss it so that we can see our flaws. Five minutes. I'll get back to you. density of a liquid. My earpiece. My earpiece is gone, but I'm sure you can hear me out. Can you? Okay. Yes, sir. So, so, Papa, let me, let me hear from you what you were able to get. Mamiya, Elizabeth, Jojo, Odric, Julian, Rachel, uh -huh. Okay, Jojo, what did you get? No, but I got... I got uh, Jojo, I, got I can't hear you. Speak up. I got one point... One eight seven five. One point one eight seven five. Yes, sir. So let me write this one. One point one eight seven five gram per cm cube. Uh huh. Let's get another answer from the ladies. The ladies who has. I got the same thing, but I rounded mine to one point one nine. One point one nine. It's the okay. same thing. Okay. Do we have any different answer? All right. Let's see. Let's see if I uh had -huh, one point one nine, Rachel. Okay. Yes. Um, so we are told it floats. Okay. So the first thing, mass of solid because mass. Of liquid displays. Density of solid 
uh, density of leopard times volume of leopard displaced. Then we are told that one feet of each volume is exposed. So one feet, one out of five of each volume is exposed. Now what is the whole volume of the solid? What is the volume of the solid? 250, right? Please, yes, that what we had for the volume. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. So if, let's calculate one fifth of 250. So we have 50 cm cube exposed, meaning 200 cm cube is submerged. And that will be the volume of the liquid display. So the mass of the solid 237.5 is equal to rho of liquid, which we don't know, times 200. Therefore, rho of L is 237.5 divided by 200. And let me also calculate and share what I had to compare that with what we also got. And this is 1.1875, 1.1875 gram per, Let's, you see, in such situations, let's not approximate it because we earlier solved a question where the density was 1.19. So to create that distinction, let's leave whatever we had so as to be different from what we've earlier used, okay? So the density of the liquid will be 1.1875. All right. So honestly, if you understand this principle, flotation questions, Archimedes principle, um, wouldn't be, it isn't difficult. So what I want you to do for me is that, please, you will spend time to review all the questions we've solved under, under this fluid mechanics. I'm going to send you an example under the same concept we've treated today. Okay, I want to see how you can apply whatever we've done for today in solving that applicational question. It isn't difficult, but you need to think through it a little bit to overcome it, okay? So you will spend time review it whilst within the day, the example will be forwarded to you. Class, is that okay? All right. So this yes, is, sir. hello. Yes, sir. If you have any question, if there is no, uh, uh, is it? Can you sit here, please? I, instead of, I didn't use the 237.5 to solve it, but I used the 225. That's the one we got from the, the mass of air minus the mass, the mass in air minus the mass in liquid. That's what I used to solve the question. So we are, we are talking about the mass of the solid though. The, okay. the 225 is the difference between, I'll say, you see, we, we can relate 225 to the uptrust. Mm. Okay. We can okay. relate it to the uptrust. It is the for a body to float, the mass of the solid must be equal to mass of liquid displaced. Okay, and so in fact, what you are saying must must work out here. Mass of liquid displaced is actually the uptrust. 
So the 225 will be this. Mm. But because we are looking for density, we are overlooking this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it should be the actual mass in A. Okay. Thank you. All right. So if there is no question, your assignment will be uploaded very soon. Please go you can review all that we've done on the uh, on the uh, page okay and when you go to the page please like subscribe and share to your other colleagues okay it doesn't matter whether um she he or she is a part of omega you can share with them so that they can also i mean learn from it do that for me i need that so badly so We'll continue our journey next week. In fact, take care of yourselves and bye-bye. Continue to have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.